Hi, it's Gail with Traders Help Desk. This is a USD JPY trade that I'm in. And I actually went out to 104. I do think it's going to come up to at least the R1 level. So I'm going to pause the screen and we'll see what happens. And while I'm waiting on this trade to work out, I just wanted to show you the charts that I use that have my own indicators on them. You can see that we have the blue dots here, so that tells me to go long, basically. And you can also see that they were plotted early as this price bar was coming back. So I had early notification that I needed to look at this market. Then we also had volume divergence. In fact, on this bar, buyers actually came in because you see that real small little blue line above the zero line. So that was a great indication that the market should go up from this point. So um, the stochastics that I'm using is one that I'm actually working on. And it's a little bit smoother than the typical stochastics, which is kind of like everywhere sometimes. So I wanted something that was a little bit smoother. You can see that my strike line is at 104 and I paid $36 of risk for that. Now, um, there is a huge area of support right here. You've got the 200 period moving average. You've got the 20 um, period moving average, the 50 period moving average. They're all located exactly where this dot is located. This is one of the reasons I believe that it's going to go up. So we'll wait and see. Now, um, in the USD JPY, but I'm also going to do a spread on the Dow because I think it might go down at the US Open um, just because of what my charts are telling me. So I went ahead and did that one as well. And it's the 18.050 to 18.150 area. You know, if this doesn't go down like I anticipated, then I would lose the rest that I paid on entry. But it is showing signs that it may go down. So, okay, as you can see, the USD JPY has moved up, and I expect it to come up to the R2 level. Now, if you go back, and I can't show you a spread chart, they don't really have one for that. But you can see that I lost the $120 that I put up on the 10 contracts. Of course, that does have another hour and 13 minutes until it expires. So, you know, if they spike it down, I could still actually come out with a lower loss than what I currently have. You can also see that right now, if I wanted to exit the position, that it's currently at about $80. So if I see any weakness in this whatsoever, I'm going to take what the market is actually offering. I'm actually hoping that it does come up to the R2 level, but this is why I'm going to monitor it very closely. I want this number to get as high to 100 as possible. So that's what I'm looking at. Now, the reason I'm looking at the sale is because I'm long. You see that right here. It says plus 10. So the more that this price bar goes up, especially with 12 minutes left, the closer this will get to that $100 mark. It normally stops at about $94, $95. And I know that. So what I'm looking at is for this to get as close to the R2 level as possible, but I'm not going to give back the profits that I've made. So you're always kind of balancing that out. Okay, now you can see that the premium is at 92.50, and I'm going to go ahead and exit that because it's just not worth the extra $7 to actually expose my contract to the remainder of the period. Now, again, on this one, I'm at a full loss. But again, to me, this was one that may or may not have worked, which is why I chose to do the spread because it only had $12 of risk in trading 10 contracts. That was $120. And I'd much rather lose $12 on what I would consider an iffy trade versus 30 or $40 over on the binary side. 